spring kings. Check it out. Spring mushrooms. It's springtime now, so there's two main mushrooms we're going to be looking for. One, the morel, and you probably have heard a lot about that. Second, we're going to be looking for uh, the spring bolletes, also known as the spring kings. So both of these mushrooms are incredibly difficult to see. Uh, the morel, it just really camouflages itself. It looks a lot like a pine cone or just a piece of foliage on the ground. So you kind of have to calibrate your eyes in order to see those ones clearly. And then the bolete, those spring kings, the ideal way to find them is when they're still buried in the ground. So you just see the barely the top of the cap sticking out, or you see what we call a shrump, which is just some dirt kind of sticking up out of the ground, and you unbury the mushroom. And we want to find them like that, because then we get them before the bugs do. So we're going to take a look around, see if we can find either of those spring mushrooms out here today. I've been seeing a ton of bird's nests, actually. Check out these tiny flowers here. These are called calypso orchids. And these are a good sign when you're looking for certain mushrooms because they have a relationship with mushrooms that's different than a lot of plants. So if you'll notice, each one of these flowers has a single green, single green leaf. That green leaf there is what helps them photosynthesize and eventually that green leaf will wither away and will be gone. So they have this relationship with the fungus that's all growing in the soil and they exchange nutrients from each other. There's actually another plant right over here I want to show you too that has the same kind of relationship. So let's go take a look. Here's the other flower. If you take a look here, it's called the striped coral root. And this also has a similar relationship um, with the fungus as that Calypso orchid does. If you notice, this plant has no green on it. So the green in plants has the chlorophyll, which helps with the photosynthesis, which gives the plant nutrition. So this kind of plant needs to find another way to have nutrition. Plants like these are considered to be mycoheterotroph. And what that means is myco means fungus, hetero means another or alternative, and troph means nutrition. So another form of nutrition through the fungi. So what these do is the root of the fungi, the mycelium, and the root of the plant get together and they have a fun party and they exchange nutrients and that's how these are. And there are some specific mushrooms that actually um, form these relationships. So if you get to know different plants like these that are mycoheterotroph and you get to know well which mushrooms does it have a relationship with, it's a good sign when you're looking for certain kinds of mushrooms. And plus they're really pretty. Oh my gosh, this thing is huge. So this, this is a spring king. It's uh, fully out of the ground now, and you can see it's been eaten away and everything, but I'm gonna pull out in a minute and we can take a look. But first I wanna get some photos. Uh, probably not gonna be at the point where we wanna eat it because it's gonna be full of worms, but still really cool to see. I'm gonna take some photos. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this mushroom. We're going to examine a few little features on it, talk about it. I'm still going to take it with me even though I, I realize it looks like it's past its prime. Ooh. Wow, look how big the base of this mushroom is. <laughs> It's huge. All right, so looking here at this bolete, there's a couple different features about it. If you look very closely on the stem, you'll notice this white, almost netted looking pattern that's called reticulation. So these are gonna have reticulation on them. You also notice it's got the pores, sponge layer, instead of gills. 
very, very yellow at this stage. When they're young and still kind of under the ground, how we prefer to find them, these pores are actually gonna be white, but as they age, they get darker. You can use them to actually dye. I always hate when I say die, because then people think I'm talking about the mushrooms gonna kill you. Don't know. <laughs> All right, so another, another feature is just also this kind of slightly reddish brown cap. Now, when they're young, they're not gonna have this brown coloration. They're gonna be maybe a little pinky brown tinted, but they're gonna be more white and actually have like a white powdery layer. It's called bloom, is what they call it on mushrooms. It'll have a bloom on it. Uh, you can see, obviously, it has been eaten away from a lot of bugs. Um, what I'm gonna do is slice this and show you um, an example of what it looks like when wormies crawl up inside, so. Oh my, there's a bug party going on in there. So you can see, obviously, the core of this has been totally eaten away. Um, those are little, little wormy maggots that crawl up in there. Sometimes when you find a mushroom and you slice off the end, you'll just see small holes like a few random small holes like that. That's where the little bugs are calling up. And usually with that, you can work around it. Obviously in this case, um, they've totally eaten away at this mushroom. Um, that's what happens with these spring mushrooms. Uh, when they come up, they are just gonna be infested with bugs right away. So that's why we wanna try and find these when they're kind of buried in the ground before the bugs find them. Take it with me, I'm gonna take those pores and maybe take a look at the cap and just see if there's anything I can save, but not too hopeful on that one. All right. So here we have some really small, well, they're not too terribly small, some small oyster mushrooms. These are wonderful edibles. I'm not gonna harvest these, there's just two of them. They're really small, but I do wanna take a smell because I just love how fresh oysters smell. Almost has like um, an anise or like a black licorice scent. Oh, wonderful. But you guys stay there, grow, sporulate. We'll find some other mushrooms. I do this with my shoulders a lot at the camera. Let's just go right into that. Go ahead, you're, I'm rolling on it. Okay, um, we're all right behind you. Look at that. So pretty. You can see why sometimes they're so hard to find. It's simply because they're hard to see. Do you see it? It just blends in so well. I mean, it ends up looking like some kind of a pine cone or fir cone or just, you know, it's their perfect camouflage, these guys. Perfect camouflage. I actually want to use my auto clip on this a little bit just to get kind of a close up of the pits and ridges. I almost lost this attachment. It fell out of the pouch and I didn't I didn't realize I left it open. Thankfully I remembered what flower I was photographing and was able to go back and find it. You can see pollen on it from the trees. So you can see how these guys just camouflage so perfectly. Look at these holy leaves. They almost look just like this holy leaf. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the morel. It is pretty easy to identify once you know the key features. If you take a look, it's got these holes, these ridges, these pits. And notice that they're actual pits. They're pits that go into the mushroom. They're not just folds and waves. There are similar mushrooms that have folds and waves. These do not. Also another test is pull this mushroom up. Just pull it a little bit. If the cap doesn't come off, that's a good thing. There are other false morels where if you were to just tug on this top part, pop, top would come right off. So I'm gonna just slice it open so you can get an example of what it looks like on the inside because the inside is the absolute telltale that this is a morel. Get flack for cutting towards my leg. For 
perfect. All right, so you can see that it is completely hollow on the inside. That is how a morel is. A false morel would have kind of a cottony stuffing on the inside. So these are completely hollow. So you can also see where the cap and the stem come together. It's technically all one piece. They're fused together. So that's why I can take this mushroom and hold it by the cap and kind of dangle it. It's not gonna come off. The cap's not gonna come off. I just laid down here to show y'all a little bullseat and I glanced over and look, hanging out with us, a nice morel. Look at that. How far are they from each other? Like a yard, maybe? Hanging out together, spring mushrooms. These are the spring mushrooms that you wanna find, morels. Spring kings, check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look over here at this uh, younger spring king. So you notice it's obviously much, much smaller than the giant one we found, but this one is gonna be great for eating. So you'll notice, you take a look at the pores under here, completely white. They don't have that bright yellow color like the older one does. And you'll also notice they're super closely packed together. Um, they're not, you don't really see the individual pores like you do in the other one. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my basket. I'm gonna also uh, get this little morel here to add to our bunch. We're gonna keep on going. There we go. Looking good. I don't have very good knife etiquette. Oh, whatever it is, it's a pile of mush. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! Okay, so these are spring kings, and even though they're very young, they have been totally eaten away. Look at this. Normally when you would find them like that, they wouldn't have been obliterated by bugs in the same way. Ew! It's kind of neat though, you can see the pore layer and then the actual mushroom flesh. My goodness, look at this. That's gotta be something else going on with that. That's disgusting. Well, look, there's a, there's a worm. Taking a look down here, buried in some of the duff, got some romaria which the spring romaria here uh, where I live is edible. Except we're not gonna pick this, it's just a little patch. We'll let it stay. Maybe get a little bigger. So after going out and finding some spring mushrooms, finding those morels and those bolites, I took them home and I really enjoyed them. Then I realized there are a few details I didn't share with you guys. So unfortunately, I had to go back out and look for some more mushrooms. Not that that's unfortunate for me by any means, um, but there are just a few details I wanted to make sure I hit on. When it comes to the spring kings, you wanna make sure that you are looking, uh, obviously in the spring, they are more native to Western North America, so you may not find them in other parts of the world, but you're gonna be finding them in pine and fir trees, and they are generally in higher elevations. So mid to late spring is a good time to go into those higher elevations. Um, so I, I was able to go out and find at least one good little spring king here. So I'm gonna show you just a little bit of a cleaning method and a few details like that. So I was just able to find two. Look at the size difference. <laughs> and if you remember how big that first folate that we found was, it's amazing the sizes that you can find of these things. Uh, this one here is kind of old, it was really squishy. And so it's not good anymore. But if you find them this stage, they're still really great to eat. Um, you just need to make sure there's no bugs in it like you would anything else. All right, so this one here, 
Um, it's got a little bit of dirt on top because it was pretty much buried when I found it. Only just a small portion of it was sticking out. Kind of just looked like a little rock sticking out of the ground. Um, but I was able to spot it, thankfully. Um, the cleaning process is pretty simple um, because the top you can just really just dust off with a brush or maybe with a, a wet towel. And then the bottom, just going to take your knife and just kind of do a little scraping motion like that all around the outside. And you're going to just do that all the way around the mushroom. And uh, what that will do is it'll clean off that dirt and get it nice and pristine for you so that you don't have to use a ton of water when you're washing it. Now you'll notice after I cut this, it stays nice and white. The flesh is nice and white. There are some bolites out there that stain blue. Most of those blue staining bolites are gonna be, um, gonna be either poisonous or give you a really big stomach upset, so you need to be careful of that. But once you clean your bolete and you are ready to partake, this is one of the few mushrooms that you can actually eat raw. Most mushrooms you're gonna wanna cook before you eat it. The thing is, the, the makeup of the bully doesn't exactly agree with your digestive system. It's actually hard for your digest digestive system to break it down. So even though it's not toxic and you can eat it raw, sometimes your stomach might not necessarily enjoy trying to break down a whole bunch of it. So be very careful about eating too much of it raw. Of course, if you've grown up eating these raws, you might be able to handle it a little better. Um, so you can eat them raw, you can cook them up. I know a favorite for most people is actually to dehydrate them and dry them and then use them later for other things. Uh, it seems to um, have its natural flavor come out a little bit stronger through that drying and then rehydrating process. So that's something that people really love to do and enjoy. So that's just kind of the basics with the bully there. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that since I didn't say anything before. Um, there we are, Spring King.